Thank you for joining this presentation about Sources of Strength, which is a peer leadership program being implemented in schools across the state of Maine to address youth mental health. To start, we're going to go over a snapshot of mental health in Maine, looking at data from the Maine Integrated Youth Health Survey from 2019. We'll also discuss some of the risk factors for the development of mental health concerns in youth, as well as for suicide. And we will discuss the protective factors against the development of mental health concerns and suicide. We'll finish by discussing the Sources of Strength program in depth. These data from the 2019 Maine Integrated Youth Health Survey show that our middle school and high school students are struggling. As you can see, 19.8% of 7th and 8th graders in the state of Maine said that yes, they have ever seriously thought about killing themselves. 13.7% of middle schoolers said that yes, they have ever made a plan about how they would kill themselves. 7.7% .7 said that yes, they have attempted suicide at least one time in their lives. And 18.9% said that yes, they have ever done something to purposely hurt themselves without wanting to die, such as cutting or burning. For our high schoolers, the question is asked with a different time frame in mind, asking them to only think about the prior 12 months. So in the prior 12 months from the time that the students took the survey, 16.4% of high schoolers said that yes, they seriously considered attempting suicide. 13.1% said that yes, in the prior 12 months, they made a plan about how they would attempt suicide. 8.9% of high schoolers stated that during the last 12 months, they attempted suicide at least one time. And 18.7% said that during the past 12 months, at least one time, they did something to purposely hurt themselves. These data are alarming, and it shows the importance of why a program like Sources of Strength can be so effective in supporting the needs of our young people here in the state of Maine. This is a list of some of the various risk factors for mental health concerns in our young people. For trauma, we know that there is a statistic that states that about 80% of all lifetime manifestations of mental illness are rooted in some sort of trauma. We also know that learned behavior can be another risk factor, as well as chemical imbalance. Some people's neurotransmitters just do not fire the way that they're designed to. Substance use, of course, is another risk factor, as well as seasonal changes. We know that here in Maine, we have very cold, dark, gray winters, which can really affect uh, the mood of the people who live in the state. Having a previous episode of mental illness or presence of another mental illness, as well as ongoing anxiety, are some other concerns. The body physiologically can't withstand high levels of anxiety for an extended period of time. There are certain medical conditions that can increase risk. We know that autoimmune disorders, heart issues, uh, as well as diabetes are all uh, medical conditions that increase uh, the risk factors for mental health concerns. Side effects of medication, Illnesses that are life-threatening or chronic, uh, we know that issues related to chronic pain or illnesses in which individuals are faced with their own mortality can be, can be especially difficult. Uh, another risk factor as well is brain injury. However, with all of those um, scary statistics and, and negative uh, risk factors, there are what is called protective or resiliency factors that can enhance the uh, lives of our young people and help them get through difficult times. 
So things like healthy practices, building up a high self-esteem, developing good problem-solving skills, uh, feeling in control, giving the young person the power uh, to make their own decisions and, and chart their own path is really important. Spirituality and having that connection is, is also really important for certain folks. Uh, a consistent home routine, family support, uh, monitoring of activities, having regular school attendance and academic performance, social support, uh, economic security, constructive recreation, feeling connected to community and the people around us is also really important. But this last one, feeling close to at least one trusted adult, we know that that is the single most important protective factor against youth suicide. Every young person should be able to identify who in their life is that trusted adult for them. Uh, here in the state of Maine, we know that we have the highest rate of diagnosed childhood anxiety and the third highest rate of diagnosed childhood depression. We also have higher than the national average rates of economic insecurity, food insecurity, and parental mental illness and substance use. For many of our young people here in the state of Maine, we know that that trusted adult does not exist inside the home or the family. It's somebody at school or somebody in the community or a friend's parent. It does not necessarily mean that that trusted adult is in the home. So for those trusted adults, it's really important that they build on these protective and resiliency factors that they can. For instance, teachers have no control over a, one of their students' economic security. They can't control what that looks like in the home. However, they can help reinforce academic performance, um, good problem-solving skills, giving the, the student control of, of making decisions and feeling like they are uh, charting their own, their own path. Um, so it's really important for those trusted adults to focus on the resiliency factors that they can. Let the young person know that you know, they're not alone, that you see them, that you hear them, that you value them. Um, because when they do go home, they might not be getting that. So we really want to focus on the resiliency factors that we can build up while we are supporting that young person. So we're going to transition now into talking in depth about the Sources of Strength program. The mission of Sources of Strength is to provide the highest quality evidence-based prevention for suicide violence, bullying, and substance abuse by training, supporting, and empowering both peer leaders and caring adults to impact their world through the power of connection, hope, help, and strength. The vision of Sources of Strength is that we believe that many strengths are more powerful than one, and our united goal is to activate and mobilize these strengths in ways that positively change individuals and communities. There is a lot of research on the efficacy of sources of strength. This particular uh, journal article is an outcome evaluation of the sources of strength program that was conducted in 2010 and published in the American Journal of Public Health. There is a whole page on the Sources of Strength website that goes into more detail about the various research projects that the program is involved in. But in 2010, Sources of Strength was the subject of one of the nation's largest studies on peer leaders and their impact in suicide prevention. The results of the study showed that Sources of Strength increased peer leaders' connectedness to adults and their school engagement. It also showed that peer leaders in larger schools were four times more likely to refer a suicidal friend to an adult. We also learn from that research article 
that among the general student population, the program increased positive perceptions of adult support for suicidal youth and the acceptability of seeking help. We also learned that the positive perception of adult support increased most in students with the history of suicidal thoughts. Again, there is a lot more information on the Sources of Strength website about the different research projects that the program is involved in. This is a picture of what is known as the Sources of Strength wheel. You can see here that there's eight pieces of this wheel with a different strength listed in each. These are the eight strengths that we all have in us and around us um, that we can turn to when we're going through hard times. This is the foundation of the Sources of Strength program and something that is talked about in depth in both the adult advisor and peer leader trainings. Uh, both the adult advisors and the peer leaders learn about the strengths wheel, learn about how to apply it to their own life, and then also learn about how they can share the wheel with the larger school community so more people can engage in turning to these different strengths. What's really neat about the sources of strength wheel is that a lot of these strengths overlap. For instance, healthy activities can be done with positive friends. Um, as well as uh, medical access and mental health can often go hand in hand together. Uh, another interesting uh, thing about the sources of strength wheel is that none of us can have all eight strengths at one time. Um, there's gonna be moments where we're feeling really strong in positive friends, but really feeling like we need to work on uh, connecting to mentors or healthy activities. So at different points in our lives, there's gonna be different strengths that we feel super connected to and ones that we really want to grow in. And so that is kind of the language and the framework that is the uh, foundation of the Sources of Strength program and the different uh, trainings. This is a flow chart that kind of uh, outlines um, the, the structure of Sources of Strength in a school. So at the top, you see administrator. So before anything happens, it is crucial to have administrative buy-in for the Sources of Strength program. Um, the administrator, we would want to be have very enthusiastic about bringing sources of strength into the school and someone who will foster um, the long term uh, sustainability of the program in the school. We then would want a lead adult advisor to be identified, and that individual is going to be the person who's communicating um, with NAMI Maine on all of the logistics and details. Then there's a core group of adult advisors, then a core group of peer leaders, and then that is transferred to the whole school community through the various campaigns that are carried out. So when we talk about um, this core group of adult advisors, this is what we mean. Again, there's gonna be a lead adult advisor who's responsible for coordinating with NAMI Maine. We ask that the number of adult advisors be one adult advisor to every 10 peer leaders. Adult advisors should be trusted adults in the school community. We want every student in the whole school to feel comfortable going to at least one of the adult advisors. We also would ask that the adult advisors are not just classroom teachers. If sources of strength is really gonna permeate throughout the whole school community, we need a diverse set of adult advisors. So administrators, school resource officers, librarians, cafeteria workers, bus drivers, anyone in the school that students would point to and say that is a trusted adult. We need the adult advisors to be willing participants and volunteers. So nobody is forced to participate in sources of strength. Uh, the adult advisors should be excited and want to participate. We would ask that adult advisors are comfortable modeling the sources of strength wheel in everyday life and being willing to talk about that openly with the peer leaders and other students. 
Uh, we would ask the adult advisors to help participate in peer leader recruitment efforts. We would want, of course, the adult advisors to be empowering of youth and be comfortable and able facilitating meetings and campaigns. And you can see here this picture of a group of adult advisors. These are the uh, wonderful adult advisors at Brunswick High School. And this breaks down um, the, the structure of what we would need to see in peer leaders. Um, so the ideal number of peer leaders is 10% of the whole student body. It's important to note that these are just benchmark numbers. In year one, it is okay if we do not meet these benchmark numbers. We can work to that in subsequent years. We would ask that peer leaders reflect the social and ethnic diversity of the school. So we would want every student in the whole student body um, to be able to relate to at least one peer leader. So we need uh, students who excel in the classroom, who excel on the field, who excel in the arts, who uh, might not be connected to the school community um, as well. We want to have representation from all of those different groups. Again, we would want peer leaders to volunteer and be willing to participate in the program. We would ask that they commit to spreading the sources of strength messaging across the school community. And we would also want them to help in recruiting new peer leaders and engaging their friends who are not peer leaders to participate in campaigns. And this picture here is a group of the peer leaders also at Brunswick High School. Uh, this poster says hope, help, and strength, not sad, shock, and trauma. And that really is the mantra of sources of strength, if you will. So everything about sources of strength is focused on positivity and not sadness. Um, oftentimes when we talk about mental health awareness and suicide, we hear the really sad statistics and the really... Um, scary stories to try to uh, drum up emotion in us. Um, but Sources of Strength does not do that. Everything is positive, everything is hope-based, and everything is about directing to seeking help. So hope, help, and strength is the focus of the program, not sad, shock, and trauma. Everything has a positive undertone to it. So this breaks down what the adult advisor training looks like. So we would ask for about four to five hours with the adult advisors. The training is led by two nationally certified sources of strength instructors who are staff members at NAMI Maine. The adult advisor training occurs the day prior to the peer leader training. In the training, the adult advisors learn about the history of sources of strength, including more of the research. They learn about the power of social connectedness, and they also learn about the sources of strength wheel and why it's so important for them to model it for their students. They learn about what makes an effective sources of strength advisor and what is expected of them moving forward. We also discuss in the training what happens at the peer leader training the following day, and we assign tasks to the adult advisors because they play a key role in the peer leader training. The adult advisor training is also full of playing meaningful games and participating in various activities. We do ask that adult advisors attend both their training and the peer leader training. Um, this is because we really want to begin integrating the group and having everyone begin to feel connected to one another because once the training is over, we then have the adult advisors and the peer leaders begin their meetings and taking what they learned from the training and applying it to start developing the various campaigns that they're gonna implement throughout the school year. So again, we have adult advisors coming to their training as well as the peer leader training, and we ask them to lead different components of the peer leader training because that's what they'll have to be doing in those uh, meetings moving forward, at least to start. For the peer leader training, 
We ask that it be the full school day. Again, it's led by two nationally certified sources of strength instructors who are NAMI main staff members. The peer leader training occurs the day immediately following the adult advisor training. The students learn about the sources of strength wheel and how to apply it to their own lives. They learn about the big three emotions, which are anxiety, sadness, and anger. They learn and understand the warning signs of suicide. And what's really special about the peer leader training is that they're given about an hour to brainstorm their first sources of strength campaign. So that way, after the training, they're able to start implementing the program almost immediately because they spent so much time brainstorming their first campaign during the training. Of course, we also play meaningful games. Every activity, every game, everything as part of the training, while fun, does have a, a positive, hopeful, mental health related undertone to it. So it's really important if you're bringing sources of strength to your school to be prepared. In order to sustain the program long term, we would ask that the school has made a commitment to youth mental health. And that looks like having 100% of staff having attended the suicide prevention awareness session, uh, having staff trained in the evidence-based youth mental health first aid curriculum, uh, having the school meeting or exceeding the minimum number of staff trained in suicide prevention gatekeeper, which is Maine state law. We would also ask that the school has developed and implemented a thorough suicide prevention, intervention, and postvention protocol, again, per Maine state law. And we would also ask that the school participates in the Maine Integrated Youth Health Survey. Not meeting any of these requirements does not disqualify a school by any means. NAMI Maine has the resources and the capability to help prepare schools in whatever way they might need in order to bring sources of strength in. Again, not meeting these does not disqualify a school by any means. We are more than willing and ready to jump in and help get a school ready to implement sources of strength. Sources of Strength as an entity has a few expectations as well. So they would ask for consistently active and engaged adult advisors and peer leaders. So the trainings are really exciting and encouraging and really get people ready to jump in about Sources of Strength, but we would ask that to continue long-term. And NAMI Maine can assist with that as needed. We would also ask that there are sources of strength meetings at least once monthly. We would ask that the group be creative in spreading positive messaging across the school community. Uh, we would ask that the group uh, is evaluating their progress in ways that they can improve. Uh, again, that's something that NAMI Main can assist with. We would also ask that the group do their best to implement six campaigns per the school year. So, those campaigns, again, are different uh, positive messaging, different activities that focus on hope, help, and strength that go to the whole school community and get everyone talking about that sources of strength wheel. And those campaigns are really up to the creativity and the, the, the abilities of the, the individual sources of strength group. So once trained, the group can really take it and run with it however, however they, they see fit based on uh, the needs of their school community. There is also a licensing fee that is associated with sources of strength, which we can discuss more in depth um, when, when we begin the, the initial conversations about implementation. Uh, please also note that schools are responsible providing food for all trainers and participants for both training days. So these are some of the resources that are available um, to schools that are implementing sources of strength. So there's various recruitment tools such as peer leader, adult advisor, uh, self-nomination forms, 
as well as parent permission slips. These aren't uh, mandatory by any means, but they are available for schools. There's also various sources of strength templated campaigns. And what that is, is good for is when a group is just starting out and they might not know what they want their first campaign to be, they can turn to some of the ones that sources of strengths have already created and implement those. So the first one here, thankfulness challenge, you can see this picture has a listing of uh, some different uh, elements that people might be thankful for uh, in their lives. On the other side of this paper um, is uh, boxes where, where folks can write in the different different things that they are thankful for. Um, and so schools can take those and post them up um, on a gym wall or a cafeteria wall and everybody can go around and read what each other is thankful for. Um, there's also the Trusted Adults campaign, which looks like taking a little postcard and writing a thank you note to your trusted adult and then going and giving it to that to that individual and thanking them for, for the ways that they have influenced in your, uh, your life. So there are various different campaigns that are already created that groups are welcome to use. Again, not, not required by any means, but they're there as a resource. So this is a listing of uh, the different uh, elements you can expect from NAMI Main. Um, so we will have an introductory conversation with interested parties, um, discussions with school administration. We will consistently coordinate with the lead adult advisor. We'll help the school identify adult advisors and peer leaders. We will provide a robust and energetic training um, from our nationally certified sources of strength instructors. And then we will also provide technical assistance after the training, which is dependent on the needs of the group. So some of the different things that uh, that looks like is we can help with campaigns, we can troubleshoot any issues that might arise, help uh, expand the program in the school community. We also act as the liaison between the school and uh, sources of strength. Um, so we can help with, with purchasing different swag items. Um, we can help uh, navigate the different sources of strength, resources, materials. That technical assistance really is dependent on the needs of, of the individual sources of strength group. So the next steps um, is having that initial uh, conversation, expressing interest in sources of strength. So you can contact us here um, at NAMI Maine by emailing may at namimain.org or calling 622-5767. And we will finish now with a video message from our peer leaders at Mount Ararat High School. 